Hello, I am Jeanette Washington, and I am going to be presenting a um, presentation based on one that was done at Agile Testing Days, the online edition in 2020. The name of my presentation is called Anchors Away. So I created this particular presentation because um, I was really invested in looking at ways in which those with ADHD can take their skills and really provide um, some value in different spaces. The, the title anchors away, meaning that after the anchor has been pulled up, they can depart and really start to um, maneuver in the tech space. So in this particular presentation, I am happy to give the expectations and the non-expectations because for me, it's really important that you know what to expect. Um, so first things first, I will be defining ADHD and I will assemble some productivity tools that you can use. Um, however, you will not become equipped to diagnose ADHD in this presentation. So I hope you're not thinking that you'll leave here and be able to, to really um, help people to acknowledge whether they have ADHD or not. And um, finally, you will not be able to provide a medical prognosis or prescription upon having attended this particular presentation. Maybe in a presentation, but not in this one. A little bit about myself. I am the author of the book, Technical Difficulties, Why Dyslexic Narratives Matter in Tech. I am an international speaker. I've spoken on quite a few stages, including that of the GT Banks Autism Conference in Nigeria and PyCon in Dominican Republic. So there have been some really cool spaces I've been able to penetrate and talk about um, ADHD, autism, dyslexia, and all of the neurodivergent um, abilities that can be encompassed in this tech world, in this average everyday society that we are kind of navigating. I am letters trained. That means I am equipped to provide um, interventions for those who have dyslexia or other language-based learning disorders. I've worked as a speech pathologist and a software engineer. So I definitely have that ed tech background that um, a lot of people are starting to um, really appreciate. So first things first, I always like to start off with a slide that's really telling and that helps shape what we'll be learning today. So in this particular slide, it says, for a fair selection, everybody has to climb that tree, okay? So this is an exam that's being done and the examiner is saying that every single person needs to climb the tree. So obviously we see the monkey is gonna get a passing score, passing grade in this particular exam. But what about the fish? What about the seal or the elephant or the penguin? I mean, maybe the bird would be able to be the exception because the bird can fly to the top of the tree and not necessarily climb. But this right here is really thought provoking. Um, I found it online years ago and I recreated it a bit um, with my design but it's still the very same message here. Um, if we are to expect innovation in tech, we need to make room for everyone to be able to um, assess this innovation that we're garnering, okay? So in this case, there is an exam and only one or two of the participants are gonna be able to pass this exam. Everyone else is gonna fail with flying colors. So. Again, this is that accessibility piece that's so important. And it's one that's often looked at um, differently when you start to look at people with invisible disabilities or who are neurodivergent. So what's the first word you think of when you hear the acronym ADHD? Okay, a lot of people use ADD synonymous to ADHD, but it's important to think about what the first word 
or the first um, instance that comes to mind when you hear that acronym ADHD. All right, let's kind of debunk it a bit here. So ADHD is Attention Deficit Hyperactivity Disorder. Um, it was once a DD, however, the acronym has now um, evolved and ADD can fall up under that particular umbrella, that ADHD umbrella. Let's look at some definitions. So um, definitions for ADHD would um, kind of fall under the fact that it is a mental health condition and it is exhibited by difficulty maintaining attention. Um, some of the symptoms or indicators can include impulsiveness, disorganization, problems prioritizing, poor time management skills, problems focusing on a task, trouble multitasking, excessive activity or restlessness, poor planning, and finally, low frustration tolerance. Now, these are the common symptoms or indicators that you will see. However, this is not an exhaustive list. So there may be some um, items or experiences that you have that are not listed or that your colleagues or significant others have that are not listed. These are just some of the more common symptoms and indicators that we see. So let's talk about productivity hacks. So in order to thrive as someone with ADHD in this tech um, world, and being able to, to really utilize and hone your skills, you need to understand your gifts. You need to understand what works best for you so that you can use those gifts and those strengths to move forward and to excel in any space, whether it is a low tech, mid tech or high tech spaces, using some productivity tips and hacks like the ones I have showcased here would be really helpful. So, one of the, the more popular tips is to measure time tasks. You are constantly potentially doing the same routines daily, and it's important that you are able to measure how long it takes to accomplish those tasks so that when you are forecasting projects, you know, okay, it usually takes me about 35 minutes to complete this particular task. Um, I have the uh, time stand there because some people find that really helpful to utilize in minutes. You may want to use your phone and use a timer so that you can measure out how long it takes to complete a task. But all in all, it's very important to measure so that you can move along um, skillfully and knowledgeably knowing how to um, calculate the time it takes to complete a task. Next, you want to be able to facilitate breaks. Um, I have a picture of a lungs there because it's important to get out and walk, maybe do a quick exercise, um, really work on maybe your breathing, but taking breaks is going to be important because it'll give you something to look forward to. If you have a day full of things to complete, taking those breaks is going to make you feel um, so much better and give you something to look forward to. Next, you want to enable low maintenance items. So with that in mind, um, if you are into plants, I would certainly say grab a plant that does not require maintenance on a daily basis. And that again can be something to look forward to, caring for that plant, nourishing that succulent and making sure that it has everything it needs to succeed, but it's not draining or not causing you stress because it's dying, so to speak. Next, um, those with ADHD are going to experience restlessness. And with that restlessness is going to come, um, you know, antsiness. And you're going to want to get up and move around. And when you're not in that break time, it may be a little difficult to do so. So I would say to consider getting a desk exercising machine um, so that you can work those legs out. They have the desk bikes as pictured here, and those are said to be extremely helpful um, when it comes to really getting the, the shakes and bugs and giggles and wiggles out so that you have something that is keeping you from being, um, from not being your best self, so to speak. 
next to combat forgetfulness, I would suggest to get a USB um, port that allows you to heat up your coffee or your liquid items so that when you are working and when you're doing this or doing that, your beverage can make sure that it is staying warm. When you get to it, it's not cold. A lot of times we get so caught up in um, doing things around us. By the time we sit down to enjoy our, our breakfast, whether it's some hot tea or um, a hot cup of coffee, it's no longer hot. So to combat forgetfulness, it's really important that you look into USB warmers for your um, liquid beverages. And finally, I want you to forge organization. What that may look like is getting a clear binder organizational tool or method that is set up at your desk. It may look like getting folders to put information in. It may look like uh, getting post-its to organize what goes where and how, uh, but getting an organized space is going to be a really big key to success. All right, next, let's look at some apps that can um, create efficiency, um, not only productivity, but efficiency. So we have Evernote, which is a great way to outsource your memory. Um, there are other apps like Evernote, basically you, use this app to simply take notes on the fly. If you are riding in the passenger seat and you see something, it sparks interest, you can type it right into your phone. If you are working and you say, oh man, I forgot this, or I don't want to forget this, it's a great way to just jot that memory down and so that you can come back to it at a later date. Fit On is an amazing workout app that helps you to create those habits of wellness. Um, it does have notifications that can be embedded into your phone so that you know at a specific time each day, you are gonna get up and you are gonna do your walking, you're gonna do your Pilates, you are going to do your um, classes like Zumba. Um, it's all stacked into that phone. It's really cool because they have instant gratification through accolades that you win. You can compete with your friends for badges. So Fit On is certainly one of my favorite apps when it comes to creating healthy habits and wellness. All right, Mint, that is a great app when it comes to budgeting money. We talked about being forgetful um, and I think that plays into our budget as well. So it's important that we are being anchored in our finances and we know what we can afford, what we can't afford, and that we have goals set in place for our investments. So Mint is going to be the perfect app to get you there. Due is important for paying bills. You can set due dates so you know when something is due and when it needs to be squared away. Finally, we have Calm, which is great for easing tension. It's also helpful for um, nighttime uh, restlessness or for some who may experience some insomnia. Uh, Calm has been super helpful for me and others to ease the tension from the day and to really push you towards a more um, stabilized, um, more relaxing night's rest. And let's look at some gifts that give back, whether it is the holiday season, whether it is a birthday, um, whether you just want to acknowledge someone's love language by giving them a gift. Let's look at some gifts that are super beneficial for those with um, ADHD. So I'll start from the bottom and work my way up. The multi-device charging station is super essential. Can I say that again? Super essential because when you are multitasking, when you have all of the devices, it is great to have a charging station or dock that can complement all the different tech tools that you have at your disposal. Next, we looked at a um, you know USB mug or a USB um, warmer. This one is an Ember temperature control mug. So it keeps your 
your beverages warm and you don't necessarily need to plug in a USB or anything like that. This one is either battery powered or it can be plugged in directly to an outlet. Next, we have the acupressure or acupressure mat, which is gonna ease that tension and really help you to stay centered and balanced. Um, next, after the acupuncture mat is gonna be the blue light blocking glasses. We're all staring at our screens all day long and it's really helpful that we have that blue light blocking pair of glasses that is going to help us not become fatigued. And finally, we saw um, a similar item like this, the stationary bike with the computer surface. And again, that's gonna be helpful for that restlessness. And it would be really a fantastic gift overall to get someone who falls within that ADHD continuum or to get yourself. So again, we have the stationary bike with computer surface, blue light blocking glasses, acupuncture mat, the Ember temperature control mug, and the multi-device charging station. All of these items can be Googled so that you can find the very best fit for you or the one you love. All right, so last but not least, let's look at these next steps. Show up, take space. You decided to be here today, so that says a lot about your journey. It shows that you are ready to move right along. You are all about the anchors away. Next, learn what works best for you. Trial and error, my friend, trial and error. So I've given you tons of productivity hacks and efficiency apps and even some gifts to consider. But it's all about working or learning what works best for you. So working those items out, seeing if they're a good fit, eh, maybe not, eh, maybe so, um, but then curating a list of what works for you. Finally, you want to be the change that you want to see. So you want to make sure that you are advocating for these different resources for um, your company or within your company structure, letting them know what works best and maybe what is working for you will work for someone else. So again, that kind of falls into that advocate, advocate, advocate bucket. Because if you see that some tool is giving you the opportunity to be the most productive, then you certainly want to share that and let other people know on a higher level so that they can implement that within their corporate infrastructure. All right, so that was it for me today. Um, definitely leave comments, let me know what you think. I'd love to know what's working for you, um, what you've tried and you liked or what you didn't quite like and, you know, all of the things in between.